light came on on the top so now we have light number one and number five that is gives you two extra settings again on the low setting we are on what I call low high right now I'll punch it again and that light will move to number four now we're on low low the low setting is a little bit less than low high is a little higher so it's just some fine-tuning there heat level then is what we're concerned about one we move to two three four five and back down to one so you set it just like you want there daily maintenance pretty much includes this right here this is a cleaner for the tubes what it does is it keeps the ash from building up and insulating those tubes move that about 10 times once a day or twice a day uh, the other thing you're going to want to do when you're burning corn is it will build what we call a clinker in this pot and what that clinker is it's the starch in the corn it's unburned it will melt down and it'll be a clump just like a brick you can this tool comes with a stove you can get in here you op just open your door you knock it loose roll the burning stuff off the top flip it over the edge and it drops right in the ash pan. Or I sometimes use a flat bladed screwdriver to get in there and pry it up and then I scrape it off with this and um, drops into the ash pan and then here's your ash pan when that gets full. You open this, take it out, dump it outside on your flower bed or wherever you want. Uh, typically, I'm going to say about once a week, oh, you're going to have to op empty that. Check it. You know, after you burn it three or four days, check mm -hmm. on it. But okay. I'd say that's about typical, once what a week. The clinker you're going to want to do once a day. Okay. Um, if you're really burning on high settings, you may want to do it morning and evening. It will go longer than that, but it's so much easier to take out when the clinker's smaller. Okay. Um, beyond that, I mean, your glass eventually is going to start getting a little black. We have an air wash right here that does blow air across the glass and keeps a lot of it from sticking, but it, it will get black after a while. Um, when the stove's hot, sometimes I've cleaned it by using a dry paper towel. Don't use a wet one because it'll bake it right on there. But uh, shut the stove down and there's uh, Rutland makes a ceramic glass cleaner. That works really well. Put it on a paper towel and clean it off. It's not uh not doesn't take you know it takes a while i should say for it to build up um then once uh, i'm going to say after you've burned it a couple weeks you'll probably want to shut it down and uh, this is a little more difficult here but this is some people refer to it as the horseshoe what you have is down at the bottom on each side you see where this is recessed or, or comes out here those are where that's where your air actually goes it comes up out of the pot around these tubes is pulled down through this so you want to keep this clean you can use this tool to do that um, go up through there and just knock all that stuff out of there yeah, it's a tube. It runs like I'm at the top of it right now, basically. Um, the other thing that really works well is to get a small brush, or uh, I've even used a piece of cable. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, cheap thing to do. It's flexible. Just keep all that knocked out of there. Um, so just to one side? or uh, Both sides. Oh, I, okay, I can't see it from here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yep. But I would do that. I'd check it after a couple weeks. and You may not have to do it all that often, but of course, in that case, you have to shut your stove down. Okay. Now, one thing you are going to want to remember with the stove is when you open it to do anything, to take the clinker out or whatever, there is a switch on here that we call the vacuum switch. And what happens is um, when this stove is started, this whole system is under a vacuum. This is what we call a negative pressure stove versus a positive, which would be blowing air through. It's drawing it through the system. That senses the vacuum, and, and what that system does with negative pressure, if for some reason somebody had the door cracked open, well, we, we'll get into that a little later with the switch. We'll shut that down. But you wouldn't be blowing exhaust fumes out into your house. It'd be drawing air in. Okay. Um, if this is open for longer than about 30 to 45 seconds, that switch will catch that loss of, of vacuum and will shut it down. So sometimes when you go to get the clinker out, probably right at first, it's, it'll take a little practice. All you do is when you shut the door, you come back over to this panel, and if your light is flashing, it is shut down. Hit the on button again, and it'll take right back off. We're going to start this now, and there are a number of different 
ways and means people use. Um, it's always good to use wood pellets to start it because corn has a high flash point and so it's, it's just good to use some wood pellets in there. My One of my favorite ways is to take 91% alcohol and take these pellets and soak them in a can. Just soak them down really well. Shake it around, let it sit a couple hours, maybe soak it again and that will absorb that alcohol and those pellets will start immediately. Um, we're going to try just dumping some alcohol on these to put a little alcohol in and I just poked a small hole in the foil cap on the top of this and use it kind of like lighter fluid for a charcoal grill. Soak those pellets down well and then I like to take and stir them around just a little bit to make sure that everything's all covered. You can use gel, there's a fire starter gel that works really well. And like I said there's different things but there we have fire. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the lid, hit the on button. I'm going to show you a little bit on the draft now. There's a manual draft on here that allows you to fine tune it and that's in the back here. It's a butterfly valve. I see it. See there's open, there's closed. Okay. Now if you watch the flame here in the front, okay. you'll see the difference. That went down. Yeah. Correct. You see that's pouring more air to it. Now it's less. going up. So where do you want to typically keep it then? Generally speaking, you the the now this is probably a little too low. I have it completely closed. Here's wide open. It acts like a torch kinda. There you go. Now it there yep. no it, it, it's right there it did. Yeah, that's closed. Now oh. I'm gonna open it just a just a crack. There. Okay. Um, because the, the less amount of air that you can get to it and keep that flame burning well, the more efficient that stove is so going to be. So you think that's set about right there? I would put it there. For, you, you watch your flame and you try to just adjust it. You see that's got a nice blue mm -hmm. at the bottom and then mm -hmm. orange at the top. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're looking for. But you're the Michigan rep, correct? correct? I'm the Michigan rep for so this. So you do yes. have a few dealers around the state as right. well? Yes, we do. So we'll make sure that we have your numbers at the end of the show so they can get a hold of you. But okay. I just think, frankly, this is a great idea. And for mm -hmm. some of the reasons you said, but mostly put money back in my pocket. That's, right. that's what That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. <laughs> the bottom line. <laughs> oh, is there anything else we need to touch on, Wes? Yeah. You know, I think that's just about it. I mean, there there is a little bit of a learning curve to these. You know, you're you're not turning a switch on and walking away. So expect to have a few questions. Hey, if you have questions, I gave you my business yep. card. Yep. That's what that phone number is on there for. And I always tell people that if you ever have a question or a problem, just give me a call. Um, I found that about 90% of the time I can, we right can go right phone. over the phone and we can tell them what to look for. There's one thing I know we forgot. This is only one of about four, five, six different models. Yes, that's right. They get bigger from here and you can yeah. eat them. A huge barn with one for that matter. This, this is our smallest model. It's the smallest model and I think it's going to work great here but we're you also make a furnace that we're talking right. about putting in our house and mm -hmm. I hope that still works out for us both but uh, then that will heat your whole house through the ductwork. That's uh, yes that's piped into the ductwork. Yeah. We'd like to thank Thomas from Zedunic Heating and Air and Mike Sudbury from Oasis Heating and Cooling located in Lansing for all their expertise in installing our corn burner. Also, a big thanks to Mike Hafner from Magnum and Wes Friesen from Homestead Heating for all their help in getting this job done. See you all in June for our walleye fishing trip in Lake Erie. That's this week's show, everyone. We hope you now understand there are more efficient ways to heat your homes, offices, and cabins while saving yourself and your family a lot of money. Savings which might certainly be used for a special outdoor hunting and fishing adventure for you and your family each and every year. So until next week, I'm Rob Trot saying, get outside, there's no better place to be. Post captioning for Great Lakes Outdoors is provided by Burke Video Company. Burke Video, serving the Metro Detroit area since 1985. Great Lakes Outdoors is brought to you in part by Rosie Brothers in Dryden, Michigan, representing Kubota's complete line of tractors, mowers, and implements for farm, home, and commercial jobs. Also offering their rugged Kubota 1140 and 500 utility vehicles with the comfort of a car and the power of an RTV. And by Xmark. Spend less time mowing and more time fishing. The Quest is powered by Briggs & Stratton Extended Life Series or Kohler Commercial Grade Engine Option and 48 or 52 inch formed welded cutting decks. With Xmark, you'll spend less time mowing and more time enjoying the great outdoors.